Hi, Gabriel, Gideon, Jonathan, and Josie. Here's another story. It doesn't look like it's working. Oh, yep, it is. Okay. Splat the cat and the duck with no quack. Hmm, what's that going to be like? Splat's bike went clickety-clack as he rode along the bumpy track to cat school. Suddenly, the wheel of the bike got stuck in a crack. Oh, right there. Got stuck in a crack. With a whack and a smack, Splat tumbled on the track. Splat found himself nose to beak with a funny duck. The funny duck had a little book. The duck gave Splat a funny look. How odd, said Splat. This duck was strangely quiet. A duck lacking in quacking, said Splat. That's not right. Don't worry, duck, said Splat. You must be lost. I'll take you back to the pond and I will help you get your quack back. Splat picked up the duck with the little book and put both in his backpack. Take care in there, said Splat, and don't sit on my fish stick snack. Splat put his backpack back on, got on his bike, and set off again along the bumpy track towards the pond. Splat's bike went clickety-clack, clack, clack, clack. Oh, looks like he kind of Tire's not doing so well, is it? Splat stopped by the pond and opened his backpack. Duck popped out, looked about, and popped back in again. Maybe Duck isn't lost, Splat said. Mrs. Wimple Dimple will know what to do. And Splat wobbled his way back on the track to cat school. When Splat got to school, he parked his bike in the bike rack shack and dropped his backpack on the bumpy track. Duck looked out from a crack in Splat's backpack. Duck saw Spike's silly grin and had a panic attack. Ooh, that scared her, those big teeth. Duck jumped out of Splat's backpack Duck, duck, yelled Splat. Where, where, yelled Plank, looking blank. Too late, Splurf. Looks like Duck ran into Plank. The tuck with the little book sat on Plank's head. No quack, said Splat. No quack, said asked Spike. No quack, asked Plank. No quack, said Splat. A duck lacking in quacking, said Spike and Plank. That's not right. Maybe Duck is hungry, said Spike. Spike took the fish stick snack from Splat's backpack and gave it to Duck. But Duck didn't bite. So Spike ate the fish stick snack himself. Maybe Duck is sad and needs to be cheered up, said Plank. Plank made a funny face. <coughs> Duck didn't laugh. Duck didn't even grin. Plank's funny face stayed stuck. I know, I know, said Kitten. Duck needs a bow with a little pink dress to match. That will bring Duck's quack back. But the bow and the dress were not a success. Duck's beak stayed firmly closed. Mrs. Wimple Dimple will know what to do, said Splat. Miss Wimple Dimple looked at the duck. A duck lacking and quacking, she asked. How very odd, but the answer must be simple said Mrs. Wimple Dimple. I will examine this duck with the little book, said Mrs. Wimple Dimple, 
she played some music to test Duck's ears. Duck danced a merry duck dance. Duck's hearing's all right. Maybe the problem is with Duck's eyesight, said Mrs. Wimple Dimple. Mrs. Wimple Dimple pointed to the chart. Duck just looked blank. She looked closely at Duck. Hmm, I see, she said, but I don't think Duck does. Mrs. Wimple Dimple put her glasses on Duck's beak. Duck blinked. Duck opened the book and started to read out loud. As he read, Duck began to quack. Quack, 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 followed by a quack, quack, quack. Hooray for Duck, cheered the helpful cats. She just couldn't see. Quack, 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 quack. And Duck's quack was back. And that was that. Quack. Bye-bye.